Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part 10 of our BDD video series. So in this series, we're going to discuss about tables and dynamic tables in much detail. So before starting this series of video, I would request you to watch part 7 since this video is a continuation of part 7. So if you have watched the part 7, we discussed about how table works, how we use the table to create an instance of a custom class and how we populated the data into the custom class properties and how we retrieved the values out from a custom class properties. In this video, we are going to discuss about one more way of accessing the table called dynamic tables. So working with assist.dynamics. Assist.dynamics is a separate package which can be downloaded from NuGet using specflow.assist.dynamics which performs a lot of dynamic instances of a tables and also we can create a dynamic set of a table. So the namespace looks much like this, specflow.assist.dynamics. So using assist.dynamics, it is much easy to operate on the table and the code will be much readable and reduce the number of custom classes to be created for each and every table. So if you remember in part seven, for populating a data from a table class of a feature file, we created a table.create instance method and then we filled the data to a custom class and then using for each loop we retrieved all the value out from it so it was really a pain so in order to reduce that we are going here for pickflow.assist.dynamics let's see what i mean in visual studio itself directly so this is the same project we worked so far what i'm going to do here is if you could remember just for recollection i'm going to the feature file if you could see this scenario, what we did was, when I fill all the mandatory detail in the form, like name, age, phone number, and email, we retrieved them in uh, in our step definition file right from here. So we created a set of a table, and then we created a set of type employee details, and see if you could go back to this particular employee details class, using go to definition you can see we have created some properties like name phone age and email so for for each and every details or for each and every column names of a feature file name age phone and email we are creating a properties like this and the property name should match exactly the column name in the feature file all right so we created them and then we created an instance of it and then we stored the value into a var and then we iterated the value out from it. So since it is a strongly typed, we can directly put dot age, dot email, dot name and dot phone number out from it and then the values will be displayed. But the problem here is every time while creating a set, we need to have this particular class for class to be created and it's just really a pain in bud because every time we cannot keep on creating a class what if in a scenario we have different way to insert a data into our application if we have like uh, five or six different types of way to insert a data within an application so every time we need to create this particular custom class and that's kind of annoying if your project goes longer or if your project gets bigger so in order for that to be reduced we are going to use something called assist.dynamics the first thing we need to do is go to the reference right click it and hit the manage NuGet package so here we're going to install the NuGet package assist.dynamics just search for specflow.assists just hit the install and this will add a reference to your project and it says that it has been modified so do you want to reload that yes okay so I've reloaded that and now if you go back to your packages.config file, you can see the assist.dynamic has been added into your project. Great. The next thing we need to do is we need to add a namespace called using specflow.assist.dynamics. So this is the new namespace which will perform the dynamic instances, dynamic sets operations. So what I'm going to do right now here is I'm just going to comment this code so that we can distinguish between the normal create set method with the dynamic create set method. So I'm just going to comment this code out and then I'm going to work with dynamic, right? The next thing is 
I'm going to call the table dot. So if you could see here, there are two new methods being added, and these are the extension methods coming directly from assist.dynamics. Create dynamic instance of you can create a dynamic instance, but since we are going to iterate in a for each loop, we don't have to use the create instance here. We have to use the create set because create set will return an i enumerable way of retrieving the data. So I'm going to do a create set, right? And the beauty of create set here is I'm not going to pass any of the custom class here. So I'm directly going to call this create dynamic set. So what this will actually do internally is this will since it is using the dynamic system dot dynamic namespace what it does is it will inbuiltly it will create a type dynamic with all the properties related to the tables column name which is coming from the feature files so we'll see how it looks like so i'm going to give a var types here so var details is equal to table dot create dynamic set all right the next thing is I need to iterate this value so I'm going to iterate this using for each I'm going to give details here to EMP all right so if I type EMP dot you will not get anything any properties since there is no property exist and it says like dynamic expression this operation will be resolved only at runtime so we know the column names so what I'm going to do here is it's again it's case sensitive because dynamic will be evaluated only during the runtime. So I'm going to type emp.h. So just print it out. Or uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to just copy these things. Uh, so that's like a cheat. All right, just copy pasted that, and it still works because this column names are exactly of the same type so we don't have to worry about that i'll just go ahead and run that from my test explorer if i run this feature so once it is done if you go to the output you can see that the details of the employee is karthik this is the value and this and this that's it so as you can see here we have reduced the complexity of creating a custom class like employee details and also we directly retrieve the value out from it so that's great if you type correctly the column names then you are in a good shape or if you type the column names wrongly then probably you will have a hard time because if you change the case here let's say I'm going to change this case to small a and then if I save it and if I run the same test once again and it shows you an error saying the system dot dynamic dot expand object does not contain the definition for age and the runtime binder ex exception happens because it couldn't it couldn't bind with your tables uh, column name with the value that you have supplied in the property of the particular EMP that's you need to care about and so that you need to be typing it correctly since it is not strongly typed the intelligence will never show you the age email name or phone number all right that's it guys so this is all about the assist.dynamics of specflow very handy and very helpful Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great day.